Hello, I'm David, and this is part one of a three-part series showing you how to create better visuals for floor plans. This video will focus on creating floor plan diagrams using Photoshop. You can be an absolute beginner for this, as I'll walk you through only the necessary steps. First, you need to get one of your drawings. I typically use PDFs for this, but you can use JPEGs or PNGs. Go ahead and open it with Photoshop. Just go ahead and click OK. Let's give the drawing some breathing space. So we'll go to image and then canvas size. Let's go with 1400 and 1400. Okay, perfect. We're going to be dealing with the rasterized image, so make sure the size of your image is of good quality for your presentation as you won't be able to enlarge it without risking pixelization. Once you have this, we'll be dealing with the layers panel down here. If you don't see it, you can go to window and then make sure that layers has a check mark on it. It should pop up. We're going to start by creating layer groups. This will help with keeping things organized for yourself and anyone who needs to access the file. It's also going to help us on the line if we need to make changes or when we start to animate layers in Premiere Pro. We're going to go down here to layer group and then we're going to create a new one. And then we're going to title this floor plan. You can name it whatever you like, but make sure it's something that is obvious to you and others. You can also change the color of the label by right clicking and then choosing whatever you want. I typically add a label because down the line when you have hundreds of layers, it can help identify which group you're in. Next, we're going to move layer one, which is our floor plan. So now it's in the floor plan layer. Sometimes there will be a lock here. If it is, just unlock it and it'll just revert to calling it layer one. That's fine. And then go ahead and put it in floor plan. So a pro tip, if you know the floor plan might change, go ahead and convert to a smart object. You can do that by right clicking and then selecting convert to smart object. This will create a link to the file you're using to work with. You can override the same file to update the drawing. If it does not update, you can right click on the layer and then go to relink file and then you should be able to relink it to the drawing that you're using the caveat to this is if you want all your layers to line up to the new drawing it has to be the same dimension we're going to create five new layer groups first one's going to be bg for background i'm going to make this with no color the next one is going to be textures, landscape, entourage, environment, and final. I'll put some labels on this. You want floor plan underneath textures. There we go. So if you have a PDF or a PNG, you'll see that you currently have no background. So to fix that, you're going to make a new layer in the background. Go down here to the plus sign for create a new layer. And then you want to title this white or whatever you want and then make sure that your color is set to white then you can go to the paint bucket tool which is down here or you can tap g next we're going to get acquainted with the marquee tool and the layer styles so we'll click on the textures layer and you want to create a new layer and then we'll name this lobby now let's say that we are wanting to highlight where the lobby space is so you can type m to get the marquee tool or you can long press here and you can get these options i'll be dealing with the rectangle one because it'll be simpler
then go ahead and make your selection. Now make sure that your fill color here is set to white and then with by tapping G or using the paint bucket tool again, you're going to fill this in with white. So next we're going to be changing the blend mode to the layer that you have your selection on. Over here where it says normal, click on it and then you will set it to multiply. You see that you can see through it now, but it looks like you've made no selection. But don't worry, you have made you have the white in there. So next you're going to double click on lobby and then you're going to go down to color overlay. This is typically defaults to red, but you can change it to any color that you want. Let's choose this blue. Okay. Here, make sure that multiply is set. Sometimes it'll have normal, but if you have normal, you can't see through it anymore. So click multiply and okay. This will allow you the flexibility to change the layers colors on the line for whatever reason. So let's say that the client doesn't like that color or your superior doesn't like that color. You can double click over here. It says color overlay and then you can change it to something else that better fits the project's need. Not only that, but you can also with your selection, let's say that you needed to the space change somehow. So now you need to include more of the area. We'll make sure again, you paint bucket that. And now your selection is bigger and it'll correspond to whatever is set to that layer style. The same thing can happen if let's say they don't want to show any of that. So all you have to do is select with the marquee tool and then just delete that. To unselect, you can use control D. You can repeat this method with new layers to highlight other areas of the floor plan and you've essentially mastered how to create floor plan diagrams. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to render a floor plan to make it more presentable to clients. It'll build upon the tools I've shown in this video.